Hey, what's up guys? It's Coach Ben from Soccer Entrepreneur. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to become a better private soccer trainer. So this is for you, whether you want to do camps, clinics, one-on-one -on -one private soccer training, small group training, it really doesn't matter the type of training. Um, everything on my channel is related to soccer for soccer trainers, but this is gonna be uh, for any type of trainer. So I'm gonna break this in to three different stages. And these are three things that I know most trainers probably don't do. Um, they might be doing one or two of these, um, but I don't think they're doing all three. So I'm gonna break this down, keep it very simple, and make sure if you have any questions about this, uh, comment below this video after you watch it, um, but watch it from start to finish because I might answer a question that you, um, that you asked already just in the video. So the first thing, is all about preparation. So there's really two types of people out there, or two types of trainers. There's the trainer who does like a halfway effort. They will show up to the session, maybe they're on time, they're, they have a good session with the player, uh, they chat with the parents, they have a good personality, They the player likes the coach, all that's great. Um, and maybe the player's getting better. Uh, but there's, and then there's the trainer who is super prepared. This is the trainer who goes to watch the kid play in their games. They're asking parents questions all the time. They're asking the coach, uh, the club coach of the player questions about what he thinks or what she thinks he needs to get better at. Uh, they're having players um, fill out forms after games to show how they think they did on their own, uh, self-evaluation forms. There's just a high level of preparation that this trainer has. And because of that, they're gonna be much better prepared going into every session. And that's the type of trainer you wanna be. You don't want to just wing it. And this is the, this is the thing that I know is happening, um, especially in the US, all over the world. There's a lot of private soccer trainers now, um, and it's becoming a very popular career uh, which is why, I mean, I started this channel because I want to show the easy ways to do this. Um, but I see a lot of people giving, you know, halfway efforts. And what that's going to do is that's going to eventually, people will be able to sniff that out. That'll, that'll eventually give you a bad reputation. And I would rather you be a professional about it. Be, be the person who's going to show up 20 minutes early. Have all your cones out. Know, know what you're doing before you get there. Write down on a piece of paper, all the drills you're doing so you don't get lost. Um, and that's a problem I see a lot of times when trainers, when they first start, they're uncomfortable with the process of knowing what to do with their drills um, or how long they should do their drills. Everything you do should be mapped out before you even get there. Um, and that is really key because this way, you know when you get to the session, you know every drill you're doing, you know why you're doing every drill. You could explain to the kids or the parents what they're working on before they even start their session. And that shows confidence with the player that you train. They don't want to go spend time with you for an hour or an hour and a half and you be winging what you're doing throughout the session. That, that just doesn't look good. Um, and I know that because I've seen other people who, who do that. Um, and eventually, like I said, parents are going to recognize that, the kid will recognize that, and as soon as they do, they're out of your program and they're on to the next person. So the first thing is about preparation and being a professional. The second thing comes down to communication and the parents really valuing you and your time. And I've made other videos about this, so I'm not gonna go too deep into this right now, but this basically just comes down to setting the tone with parents. Before anyone ever gets into your program, they know what you expect. So if you are the type of trainer who is shy, you get walked on you know, over parents, like parents are walking over you with every decision. Uh, they tell you when they wanna train, they show up when they wanna show up, they pay when they wanna pay. If you wanna be that type of trainer, then turn this video off because I'm not gonna be the person who can help you. But if you wanna be the person who sets the tone, you have to be the trainer who sets the tone with parents from the get-go. This way they know what you expect, they know how your program works, and if they're gonna join your program, that means they're probably a very committed 
family. You don't want to attract people who aren't going to be committed into your program. Um, and that's kind of the number one mistake that I made early on. Um, I don't make that anymore, uh, but I made that mistake all the time early on. I would be looking for people who would just want to train for a month. Um, and that's really not enough. That's, that's not enough training to help a player transform their skills and confidence uh, through four sessions. I mean, I want to train someone for three months or six months or a year. That, that way I know that someone's committed to my program. Um, they're not just there checking it out. They're there. They're committed. They're getting the most out of my sessions, and I know they're going to be doing everything on their own that I asked them to do over a 90-day period rather than just a 30-day period. Um, so that just comes down to your marketing and how you present yourself. So the communication you have needs to be also professional. You need to tell them if there is a cancellation policy, you need to tell them over the phone or it needs to be on a contract. Uh, you don't want people to be surprised after they sign up with you that you have different rules. You need to lay that out, keep it very simple. This way, when someone signs up, they know what you require, they know your expectations, and everything's very easy. This way you don't have any headaches. And I see all the time, like the biggest questions I get from trainers are having to do about payments, uh, rescheduling, people not being committed. You have to take a look in the mirror and see who are you attracting into your program and kind of go, go from there and start building you know, a better system. This way you know you're attracting the right people. And the last thing that I think makes a great trainer is going over and beyond. So the typical person, and I know this because this is what I did uh, at the very beginning, I would show up to this session, I would be prepared, uh, we would have a good session, the player would get better over time, um, that's why they're there is to get results, and that's why the parents are investing into you, you and your program because they want to get results. So I was doing all that, but I started to realize that other people were doing that. Um, and what makes me different than Joe Schmo <laughs> from around the corner? Uh, and once I started to think about that, I was like, well, I need to add more value. Uh, this way, my program's different. I don't want my program to be like everyone else's. I want it to stand out. I want someone to go on the internet. I want a parent to go on the internet and type in private soccer training and land on my website. I don't want them to go to Coach Up or another you know, big website where I'm having to compete against everyone. I want to have my own brand. I want to stand alone. I want to offer something that no one else is doing. And once I started to think about these things, I started to list out things that I could do that I know no one else is going to do. Um, and that doesn't mean that I'm going to be spending more time and wasting more time, you know, training. That just means I'm doing things smarter. I'm starting to streamline my processes. Um, this way, when Someone calls me on the phone, uh, if a parent calls me, I'm very confident explaining to them what they're going to get and why they, this program is going to work. Um, a lot of times, you know, trainers won't be able to sell themselves over the phone. Um, they won't be able to explain the results. Uh, they're not going to be able to ask the right questions to parents. And once I started to really dial in how is my program different than everyone else's, that's when I started to attract the right players, the right families. I started to get people who were super committed. And that's something that I would recommend that you start doing. But if you follow those three steps, like I said, you're going to be able to differentiate everything that you do from all the competitors. Because I know most people who step into this, they look at it like it's a part-time thing. It's something I can make a couple hundred dollars you know, a month doing. Um, and they're not thinking about the big picture. This is a business, um, and you can run it like one if you choose to. So those are the three things that I feel like can help you become a better trainer, um, especially if you're wanting to start your own academy, start training players privately. And um, if you have any questions about that, leave me a comment uh, below this video. And if you click on the description box below, you'll see all the different resources I have. If you're brand new, if you want my help, um, I created a book called The Startup Soccer Academy. This is a book that really covers from A to Z what to do to get started and what to do to scale your private training. This way you can 
start attracting the right players. You can get more players. Uh, you can build this into a business. So if it's a hobby right now, you can turn it into a business. You can do this as a career. Um, and I lay out all the steps there in that book. And you can go check it out. Uh, just go in the description below. I have a lot of different resources there um, that are going to help you out. So if you have any questions, remember, uh, comment below. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to this channel. I have a bunch of uh, videos like this coming out in the future. All right, I'll see you next time.